So, uh, as I've just been introduced, my term has just ended as Pro Vice-Chancellor for Research and Innovation, but it was um, a position I was really privileged to hold here at the university for seven years. And so I will tell you a little bit about some of the things that we've uh, done over those seven years, but also about the 60-year history of the university. Um, it was in my capacity as Pro Vice-Chancellor for Research and Innovation that I had a conversation with Minnie about hosting um, this year's Design for Festival um, conference here, Design for Planet Festival conference here. And of course, we were delighted to say yes, because there's nothing we enjoy more than being able to share our beautiful city, our campus, and our university um, with new people. And I know that there were quite a few of you that hadn't visited Norwich or the university before, and we're delighted to welcome you, and also to everybody that's joining online as well, a huge um, welcome to day two of the festival. So it's taken quite a lot of planning and organisation and teamwork and collaboration between the Design Council and the UEA teams to get us um, to this point and bring you all together and organise all of the logistics and food and catering and technical support. So I just wanted to start by saying a huge big thank you to those teams for all of the hard work that they put into putting on such a successful um, conference. So can you join me in thanking those teams? I'm also personally delighted to be involved um, in this year's conference because I have a long association with the topics of the conference, uh, showing my age a little, but I did my PhD in the early 1990s around product development, and of course we all know design is a key part of product development, and since then I've been teaching and researching in and around the topic of innovation management, covering lots of different aspects of the innovation process. So I've also had many interactions with the Design Council over the years as well, and I've always been impressed by their forward-thinking approach and this sort of support and commitment that they give to the design community to really think about how we can send to design and make design um, for good and help to sort of address some of the really big challenges um, that we're all facing. So again, welcome to Norwich. We call it the fine city, and it's a city of stories as well. Um, we're very, very proud of our city, but also of its long-standing um, cultural and creative heritage and history. Back in the 1500s, the city opened its arms to refugees from the Low Countries, the so-called strangers, and we can still see traces of that history in Strangers Hall in the city, but also in a coffee shop that's called Strangers as well. Um, that non-conformity and the approach of doing different has been a core part of the city. We're perhaps past the heyday. Norwich was the second city of, of England back in the medieval times. I don't think we can claim that today. But we are proud still of the, the um, tradition that we have of that non-conformity design, innovation, creativity, um, and that spirit that's, that's held the city together. We're also the home of some great companies, and I'll just mention a few, but there's many, many more. Um, so Norwich was a very big textile centre and very famous for shoe manufacturing uh, and is the home of Start Right Shoes. Also, uh, quite, quite a large financial centre for the size of the city as well. And Norwich Union was formed here, later became Aviva, a huge and successful financial um, services company. But also, perhaps most famously associated with Norwich is Coleman's Mustard, and um, they were pioneering as well in the use of branding, perhaps one of the first companies to really use colour in its branding. And also, I understand from our professor of, of brand management in the business school, um, one of the first companies to also use celebrity endorsement, uh, using a famous cricketer of the time to endorse um, their products as, as well. So that's quite interesting. And then, as I said, we're really pleased to welcome you um, to the campus. So the campus was uh, formed in 1963, and uh, we employed an architect called Dennis Lasden back then to design the university's master plan, um, a famous brutalist architect. And he was really, the founding ethos of UEA was around the spirit of interdisciplinarity and collaboration, which is why I think uh, the fit of this year's theme of the conference is also um, so apt. And 
his concept was to build what we call the Lasdon Wall, which is this spine that runs the length of the campus. And his concept was to try and connect people from multiple disciplines to be able to easily interact with each other. He raised the walkways so that people could flow easily across the campus without having to be interfered with by the traffic below. We haven't been able to keep that concept as the campus has grown, but that walkway is still a real uh, place where people bump into each other and exchange ideas ideas and meet each other, so still really important. You can also see in that picture the Sainsbury Centre, which some of us um, were at l last night. So that was uh, Sir Norman Foster's first public building and was designed to house Lord and Lady um, Sainsbury's art collection as well. So over the years from the master plan, we've added and developed the campus and tried to stay true to some of those founding principles. You're in the Enterprise Centre, which was opened in 2015. Again, a trailblazing building which tried very hard to use sustainable and locally sourced materials where possible and was really built around a, a spirit of enterprise and sustainability. And I think it's sort of standing the test of time, so it's eight years old now. Um, it's partly businesses located in here. So in this wing um, over this side, we have businesses that have chosen um, to be tenants, if you like, within the building. And those businesses tend to be um, ones with a low carbon ethos or with a strong connection to the university. The founders may be alumni of the university, for example, or want connections with some of the key um, academics and researchers across our campus, or access to student talent to help their companies grow. So we're very, very proud of this building and its ability as well. We teach students in here, so we have seminar rooms and classrooms, but also obviously it's a wonderful um, conference venue as well. So we're really, really pleased to welcome you to the building and to the campus. I just wanted to show this as well. Um, again, these are UEA's four core values, and as you see at the top there, collaboration. So again, it seemed really fitting with the theme of, of this year's conference. So collaboration, as I said, was one of our founding principles over 60 years ago. I think arguably that has got harder to achieve as we've grown. So we now employ over 3,000 staff, around 17,000 students. So quite a large community and uh, lots of different disciplines. We've got um, around 20 schools of study across the university. And it's a challenge um, to bring people together and collaborate, as we discussed yesterday, trying to foster that sense of, of true, authentic collaboration isn't always straightforward when we speak different languages, have different sort of perspectives on issues, but something that we do believe in very strongly and want to encourage. So in my role as PVC, uh, we created UEA's Research and Innovation Strategy. This will be launched uh, later this year and early, into early next year. So I just wanted to share um, some of that with you. So again, going back to that spirit of collaboration and interdisciplinarity, we wanted to create themes that would bring people together from different disciplines that would be based in our tradition and our research strengths and our history in different areas. You've heard pioneering uh, climate change research. So we identified three core themes to focus and organise the university around. So climate, creative and health, and I'll tell you a little bit about each of those in a moment. But in the middle there, really important to us, responsible and sustainable research and innovation. So as well as doing good research, we want to do research well. So that's about the research ethics and integrity with which we do the research, um, but it's also about thinking about our path to net zero. We're also thinking about how we become a net zero university and how we do our research uh, more responsibly for the climate as well. And obviously with so many researchers in that area, that's doubly important for a university <laughs> like us. Around the outside there, you see Civic UEA. Uh, so UEA was born by, for the region, by the region. So uh, basically the great and the good and the companies and the councils came together back in the 50s and lobbied to get a university into Norwich. They had to raise a significant amount of money to do so, um, but they were successful in, in getting this university founded in 1963. So we really have, right from the beginning again, placed a lot of value on our civic role and on our relationship with those businesses and citizens of the region. And that's been really important to, to us. So we've raised that as a key theme for the university as well. And then we are a global university. We partner with other academics and organizations around the world. So our civic and global work well together. Our civic informs our global, and our global, helps, um, our global links help support the region and our civic agenda as well. 
So just a little bit about each of those themes. So the first one that we founded was Climate UEA. And as you heard yesterday, we've just recently celebrated 50 years of UEA's Climatic Research Unit. And uh, CREW, as we call it for short, um, was really instrumental in helping to actually identify that the world was indeed warming. Um, so they were collecting global surface air temperatures uh, from weather stations around the world. They were looking at proxies like uh, the width of tree rings over time and historical records to try and understand exactly how the temperature had changed over time. So arguably one of the first um, places to actually identify global warming. They're also instrumental. Um, I mean, it's hard to believe now, but I guess there was a lot of debate about whether global warming was as a result of human activity. And again, some of the research done here at the university helped to establish that that was indeed the case. So as, as we heard yesterday, we've got the Tyndall Centre as well, 20, um, just over 20 years old, looking very much at, OK, we understand the climate is changing and warming, but what do we do about it? So we've also been interested in that. And we've just got one project there about protecting our, um, our global um, coastal heritage. So we know the world is warming and we know that sea levels are rising and we know that that will impact some of our coastal heritage sites. So this project has looked at um, a, a thousand UNESCO heritage sites that are under 20 metres above sea level and are trying to predict what the impact of rising sea levels, coastal erosion, flooding might have on those um, heritage sites and then to work obviously with the um, different countries that have those sites to actually protect them going forward. So that's been a really important project and it's just one example of how we're trying to use our knowledge um, to help different parts of the world. The second theme, creative UEA. So we know, as we heard yesterday, that narrative is really important, stories, art, lots of different ways to help us try to understand and imagine different futures and different scenarios. We had a very powerful reading from Katie um, from her book as well, just showing the power of storytelling and words to help us think through and understand what is happening around us and how we might respond to that. So here at UEA, we've got that long tradition in climate, but we've also got a long tradition in creative writing and the Sainsbury Centre with that huge um, and very powerful art collection. So where better, really, than to really think about climate narratives and how we can develop our thinking and resilience towards climate change through exploring what is happening and how we might respond to it through storytelling, whether that be um, writing, whether that be drama, whether that be art, and, and um, anything that's that sort of creative process that can help us understand and respond to the changing climate. And then we also, uh, another project that is just launching this month, so uh, Logo Rewind, and this is a project with a local uh, designer, Darren Leader, and he has basically explored medieval marks. So back in the medieval times, uh, the merchants and traders of Norwich started to create these, these symbols that would mark out their, them as traders, but also their products to a largely illiterate at the time population. So th this work, th that work, um, Dar Darren has taken those marks, and some of them are still visible on the buildings and different parts of Norwich today. And he's reimagined those and taken modern graphic design techniques to sort of bring those um, up, up to date and into today's um, sense. He's produced a beautiful book, which is launching um, next week here in Norwich at the Dragon Hall. And this book was a collaboration with our historians and literature academics here at UEA to sort of understand the merchant marks in their historical context, but also to think about how they can inspire modern designers um, going forward from today as well and trace the history of that branding right through from those early days to um, today's practice. And then the third theme, health UEA. So again, just a couple of examples of some of the work that we do in this area that I think are relevant uh, to the topics of the conference today. So we've been exploring health through medical humanities. So this, again, is bringing together different disciplines to think really hard about what it means to be healthy. So I just wanted to... Um, how do stories, art, design provide new ways to understand ourselves, our bodies, our health, our well-being? Who is deemed healthy? Who has access to health? How do cultural narratives um, 
influence and shape our views of health, illness and disability? How do our narratives about disability you know, really not help with the stigma around um, that people face with disabilities? So really important questions to answer. Also, we were talking a little bit earlier about how we need to centre people more strongly. So how do we centre patients more in that exploration of health and illness so that we can have better outcomes, better clinical outcomes um, for patients and people with illness and disability? And then on the right there, lockdown voices. So as we went into the pandemic, we have a long tradition of healthy ageing research. So we're really interested at UEA in how nutrition, diet, exercise, addiction contribute to our, uh, our healthy living. And the researchers turned their attention to lockdown and a thousand volunteers kept diaries for three months, charting the changes in their diet, exercise, use of alcohol and drugs um, through that process, also their mood as well and how that changed. So it's a really imp important project to understand how quite profound change um, can impact our health and well-being as well. So that was a really interesting project and a nice actually uh, sort of capturing of that moment in history as well. And then finally, Civic UEA. So as I said, we were born of and for the region. Um, and just one example of a project that really sits um, in, in, the, in the region, our researchers have been looking at how we protect our natural assets. So they've done um, a sort of a mapping and risk assessment of the natural assets of Norfolk and Suffolk, our chalk rivers, our salt marshes, um, everything in between. So we know that these environments are really important for wildlife and for human enjoyment and, and benefits that we have. Also, they sustain the, naturally, um, the, the national economy, agriculture, tourism, really important. Um, so they've been working to develop a 25-year environment plan to help decision makers to think about the environment and the assets and how we protect those going forward and build more resilient landscapes and natural resources going forward. And then we've just launched for our 60th anniversary this year, just a, a few weeks ago, our Civic Charter. And I just wanted to mention this project because we used open space techniques, which is a facilitation method. And it's similar to some of the techniques that were talked about yesterday. So we basically ran workshops, but we didn't set an agenda. We had an overarching question, which is, what does a civic university mean to you? We invited a range of participants from organisations, citizens, charities, government, and so on, local government. And we just asked them, what did they want to talk about? So they set the agenda, they decided the topics that were important. We captured those in booklets, recorded them, and then we used that to develop our civic charter. And that civic charter is basically <laughs> reflecting on our last 60 years of being civic, but trying to reimagine what does being civic look like for the next 60 years for us, for the next five years as well, next 10 years. So how do we maintain true to our founding principles of being civic, but how do we reinterpret that and think about that? Um, as we move forward and as we know the challenges that we're now facing that we weren't facing um, necessarily 60 years ago. So in summary, I just wanted to give you a really sort of quick whistle-stop tour of what we've been doing here at UEA and what we think is important as a university and how that aligns with the Design Council's ethos and um, the themes of the Design for Planet conference. So, as I said, we've been very keen on collaboration and interdisciplinarity, and we want to do good, so we want to do our research well, as well as doing really interesting research and innovation projects. So really do talk to us if you'd like to find ways to collaborate with our academics, our expertise, our students. Um, we'd love to work on new and in exciting and interesting projects with you. I've only been able to give you a very, very brief highlight of some of the things around climate, creative and health, UEA. But if you search our websites, you'll see many more interesting and exciting projects that we've been involved in in those areas. So, as I said, lightning whistle-stop tour. Um, I'm sorry if I spoke a little fast, but there's a lot to fit in in a very short time. And I know I'm just about running over time. So um, just to finally say, I hope that you enjoy today's conference. I'm really looking forward to it. Yesterday's was really exciting and stimulating. And I know today we've got some equally interesting and stimulating panellists to come. So thank you very much for coming to Norwich and UEA. And do enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you.